One Word is a production of BFAC On Air. Welcome back, everyone, to One Word. <laughs> One Word. One Word. One Word. I, I think so it's because I, I think it's because I did this. Yeah, you looked. Yeah, cool. right. you, you were. You were like you this. were like connecting via eye contact. I was. There was an energy between you two, we and you just felt it. You guys were mesmerized. Mm. Yeah, crazy. I know. <laughs> I am Dominic. I'm Jenna. I'm Rosy. I'm Harmon. That's right, and this word is mesmerize. Oh my gosh, it was an interesting one, wasn't it? Was. It? it was cool. It was interesting. There was a little bit of story time in there. It's like we took you back in mm. a time traveling. <laughs> Yeah. Talked and a lot about story. Franz Mesmer. We, we talked a lot about Franzi. Yeah. A lot about Franz. Franzi. Yeah. I feel like his name should be Franzi Poo. Franzi Poo. You can call him Franzi Poo. Oh, little Franzi Poo. You can call him that because there's nothing he can do about it. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah, we talked about Franz and <laughs> he has a lot of ideas y'all <laughs> yeah. that you're yeah. gonna maybe love maybe not you know I, I let's let's can i ask you this let's ask I, we never really talked about this in the episode yeah like what did you think about his like the whole thing like who he was without giving away too much that's in the episode what are your thoughts about it or the people who did it or like any of that kind of stuff or the affected hat like what do you think i can understand why, yes, agreed. <laughs> I can understand why people would have been like, oh, here's a here's something to help me. Oh, my gout. Right. Mm -hmm. But but exactly bro was crazy. Was he was insane. Yeah. Was he insane or was he narcissistic is the thing that I wondered. Or maybe mm. narcissism mm. is actually narcissism is a, I believe it's a clinical mm -hmm. definition yeah, anyways. Mm. So I... It, it seemed like he had this idea. He, he he wanted to be famous. He was jamming it down people's throats, no matter what they said. Wouldn't listen to anyone else. And people follow. You know yeah. what? Yeah. Also, the fact that like you know how sometimes people will be like, "Oh, this great idea. Let's call it this." But he called it mesmerizing. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so, yeah. So. Yeah, I think that says a lot about. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 So maybe there was a little bit of that going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And uh, no amount that his mesmerizing could cure. <laughs> For <I> sure. <laughs> uh, kind of going off of that uh, with some of his treatments, I think a lot of it was due to the placebo effect, which is something we discussed in length. Have we ever heard of sirens? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. We, so we've heard of sirens and they are these things that it is a things. Beautiful oh, women. Sorry, they're Whoa. not things. Yeah. Uh, well, it's, it's not. It is part Woman, woman part, part bird yeah part right bird yes far away you're like oh it's a beautiful woman then you get close and you're like oh my god she's part bird <laughs> <laughs> that's literally what is said <laughs> literally what is said um and they uh so they they kind of draw you in mm -hmm. without any control you just kind of get drawn to them by this beautiful amazing sound that just draws you towards them. Come here. Come, Come over home. here. And when you get there, <laughs> they destroy your ship. Right? So this, so there's this concept of this thing that we we're mesmerized with as people that can be harmful to us. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and you're on the <laughs> Your ship is saved. Mine is <laughs> crashed, I think, is what's going on here. I can't here. be sitting next to her. <laughs> <laughs> I just keep, like, after we did that, I just keep thinking, like, we need to create a video <laughs> of these sirens. They're like, come here. <laughs> It'd be amazing. We need to get on that. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> well, my friends, I don't think we should talk on any longer. Uh, I'm Dominic. I'm Jenna. I'm Rosie. I'm Harmon. And I just have one word for you. Mesmerize. Okay, so mesmerize has two possible definitions. Mm, so give me choices. I know. <laughs> so the first one is to completely capture the attention of, like, spellbind, fascinate. 
or to hypnotize or put into a trance-like state or cause someone to be open to the power of suggestion or unable mm. to act on their own. Oh. Yeah. Mm. I like the second one. That's what you like saying? Yeah. <laughs> You like the second one? Yeah, it sounds cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, yes, that's what I want. Okay, okay, number yeah. two, please. <laughs> Super uh, size number two. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of mesmerize comes from uh, Mesmer, Dr. Mesmer. Dr. Mesmer. Doc- oh, to have a word named after you. <laughs> yeah. That's going to be like... Yeah, but... Like so it w- if yeah. wait wait I, don't know I just if it was wanna, good okay well let's just ask this if you were to have a word named after your y- you what would the word be like would mine be cauterize cauterize <laughs> I was gonna say it sounds way too close to cauterize <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I. So, <laughs> one of my... <laughs> I mean, what? this guy has a word I named know. after him. One of my, um, like, what do you call it? Handles on things, like, um, is carpenterism. <laughs> okay. So, I kind of, like, made up my own, like, oh, carpenterism. You're an ism. I'm an ism. You're an ism. Yeah. Got it. I don't know what I would be. I feel like my name's kind of weird to, like, turn into a thing. Like, Raziest? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. Now you it know, is. Yeah. Like, uh, like, total, like, that's the Raziest. That is the Raziest. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, yeah, that. It's going to catch on with surfers all over. <laughs> okay, I can get that's totally the Raziest. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. You like that? Yeah. Um, no, you're not getting away with this. Oh. What's yours? I was just trying to, like, sleep out a little bit. I don't, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> What if we just, what if his is like the ED? You've been harmed. You've been harmed. <laughs> You've been harmed. <laughs> it sounds like a, like a bad 90s prank show or something. It does. <laughs> Starring Ashton Kutcher. <laughs> uh, we interrupt. Go ahead. <laughs> Anyways, back to Mesmer. He was an old theorist of the power of magnetism in human health. And his studies led to... Um, Hypnosis, it was a very early kind of idea along the lines of like what we yeah. would now understand as hypnotizing someone to try and like um, kind of draw out um, whatever subconscious problems yeah. that they're dealing with. Totally. Uh, some people said that mesmer, I don't know the, the verb to mesmer, uh, but uh, to mesmerize, to mesmerize, yeah, the in more of like a, the magnety way. It had some effects, but were mostly due to like. The placebo. Like, it's totally interesting, it's like, isn't it's it? It's really cool. Because like, uh, this is something that they'll do in like a lot of studies like a, to control for the placebo effect. They'll give you like a placebo treatment. Um, and basically when you tell someone like, oh, I have this magic pill that's going to make you better. And then they take the pill and they're like, oh, I feel better. And there was really no effect. So it's, yeah. it's really interesting. Mesmer, he, he, from 1734 to 1815 is when he was. And he was born in uh, Swabia. I've never Where's, heard of... Is that a town or a country? No, he was born in Isning, Swabia. Swabia is a cultural, historical, and linguistic region in southwestern Germany. There we go. Oh. I thought he was Austrian. I thought he was Italian. No, he was... <laughs> don't you give him to so, the Italians. I'm sorry. <laughs> don't give him I'm to the off. Italians. <laughs> Gee whiz. Why did I so, think he was Austrian? Well, I think uh, he's been around... He took his stuff all over. Mm, he's you worldwide. Know. He and, took it. Yeah. And then when he brought, so then, okay, when he brought his like, also people thought he was crazy because they, they couldn't like, find, like they were like, this well, is some people true. did. Some people really liked him. Some Doctor, people. A lot of physicians. There we go. go. <laughs> the other people thought he was fine. They're like, yes, come in here. Wave those magnets over me. <laughs> like, this feels Just great. Wait. I'm going to mesmerize you all. Just so later. Just great. wait for it, though, oh. Jenna. What were you saying? Are you bringing out magnets? I, just let me mesmerize oh, okay. the way I mesmerize. Because oh, right, it's right, the right, right way to do it's, things. It's like a surprise. Okay. You know? <laughs> I know. That makes me so scared. <laughs> <laughs> I know. But it's so funny because there was one thing I read. They were like, they would he would bring people into a dimly lit totally. room. So let's talk. Let's wanna, let's talk about it. Since you're talking about it, you said dimly okay. writ, lit, right? Yeah. So what? first of all, the thing to know is where he was going. So he did study... He was a doctor, right? He studied uh, different things, though. A doctor. (laughs) Doctor of weirdness. (laughs) Philosophy and theology and law Mm -hmm. before he settled on medicine. And so he got, he went to the University of Vienna. Is this why you think? 
So he was in the University Mayhaps. of Vienna in 1766. Uh, we get to his whole philosophy. We'll skip forward because there's different iterations of it. And finally, it goes that there is this invisible fluid running throughout our bodies. And every ailment that we have is caused because of blocked fluids. Okay? And so the, the way to treat any ailment is to restore the flow of this fluid. This is great, right? So, it's so weird. <laughs> <laughs> now, the, the great thing that he found out for us that we didn't know until Mesmer is that it is, it's, it's, it's magnetive. This fluid inside of us, <laughs> it's magnetive. So there was a period in time where he was having people swallow bits of iron. Oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get those iron supplements, you know? <laughs> so that they didn't he have could, the pills, yeah. They didn't have, so that he could come with his magnets and move the bits through the body and get that things liquid. flowing. That's actually kind of crazy. <laughs> Just a little bit. Not just, just like, in the 1700s. <laughs> I guess, uh, okay? Just yeah. what the people needed. Right? Well, and, and like some of the people were like, no, this is working. My toothache is gone. And there like, are some things. Yeah, there are some people that like there's documentation that stuff happened with. Huh. But I like to think it's kind of what harm was yeah. okay. the placebo right, there we thing. Go. The mind controls the body. Well, so. Go Sorry, ahead. no, go ahead, please. Oh, okay. I was going to say, so, so he goes to the French Academy of Sciences, right? That's where he goes to, like, get this to be, like, a thing. And they turn him away, and they turn him away, and they turn him away. Oh. Over and over again. So what did he do at that point? Well, I'm not, doesn't matter what they say. Let me talk to the people. <laughs> and so he goes to the people. And he sells this idea to them, and bam, the people are on board. Does not matter <laughs> that the Academy of French Sciences... I like this dude's a quack. <laughs> they know. They, it doesn't matter that they're like, mm-mm, 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 multiple times, just like that, too, right? <laughs> but the people are like, oh, yeah. Right? That's, yeah. that's the world we're living in there. Well, and he, so, mm -hmm. he, sorry, I keep no. interrupting no, you. No, please, I love interruption. He also had this idea of like, not only is there this, you know, like force within this liquid within, you know, stuff, yeah. but also it's affected by the planets as well. Yeah, there is, yes. So this whole thing relates to animal magnetism, magnetism. as well, yeah. right? And, and it's, it has to do with gravity and magnetism and how there's this unspeakable uh, sometimes energy yeah. too that can be between the people and the animals and the earth and how the alteration of any of those energies can alter. Right. It's like you as a person, like the idea that a person can be affected by another person or thing or planet and that it draws you to those things. Yeah. My animal magnetism. Yeah. Yeah. I, whenever I, okay, I actually kind of love the phrase animal magnetism <laughs> because mm -hmm. there's this movie I watched. I forget what it is. No, no, no. I remember. Haha. -ha, it was the Magnificent Seven, the new series that was new in like the 90s, yeah. early 2000s. <laughs> that is still new. And this, <laughs> and this one guy was like, why are all these ladies coming up to you? He's like, it's my animal magnetism. And that's what I think about. <laughs> I think it's about true. that all the time. It is true. <laughs> I mean, that is true in some sense today. When you hear mesmerize too, it has to do with, I'm going to use this from last year, folks. Don't, don't, don't go in on right. I got it. You ready? Okay, yeah. It has to do with your riz. Oh, good job. Riz. Good job. That's hey, really good. Goodness. Correct use of slang. Ten yeah. points yeah. to, ten points to that. I'm really proud of you. Proud yeah. of you. <laughs> this podcast teaches things. <laughs> we learn. We learn. But that's that's kind of what mesmerize has to do with today, if yeah. we were to fast mm -hmm. forward to today. So what did he what did he what did, what was he doing? Like he was he was doing everything from headaches mm -hmm. to melancholia. 
what melancholia like sadness yeah it's mm-hmm. it's kind of what we call depression, depression. today yeah. so mm-hmm. right melancholy <laughs> <laughs> I like that pronoun- <laughs> pronunciation <laughs> better. Uh, and this would even evolve into something larger than individual use. He invented this massive bathtub that he would fill with magnetized water. Can you magnetize water? <laughs> he uh, is the only <laughs> one. <laughs> he did it. And so what can happen is like there's things that come out of the water, like hooks and bands. So if I had a headache, I could it goes into the water and then it goes around my head. So that magnetized water is like freeing the fluids inside of me. And I would the, the room itself would be dimly lit. Mm-hmm. There would be music playing behind it. Very calming. I didn't get that. <laughs> My watch thinks I'm talking to it, right? How would they have? What, how did? How did they have music playing? They had someone in there playing. Okay. Uh, and it was a very specific instrument that I don't remember was right now. Was it the? Uh, was it the? No, it was not a harp. Glass harmonica. No, no, no. It was. Uh, I was apparently, the one like the I thought, I saw something about it, like how he might have played it, but I don't, I don't know. know. Hmm. What's the thing with the with the with the vibes? Oh, it was not that. Uh, yeah. like harpsichord? No. Like the, no, it was with air. It was just shoot, literally I'm air, thinking. and you moved your hand oh, around the, and it went, oh, um, yeah, the yeah, yeah. Like the one they have like in all those alien movies. Yeah. Like, like the, yeah that did was those, not ex- it. Those, did those exist? It oh, back then, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, is that what it was? It was in the formation of a piano still. Oh. It, in, in the imagery that I saw with it. Theremin. Yeah. Theremin. Yeah. Theremin. Yeah. Theremin. Yeah. Theremin. Yes. There you go. <laughs> And so, uh, and here's the other thing. He wore his lilac gown thing. <laughs> that is what he would wear. Because when we get to the mesmerizing portion of this, when I mesmerize you all, oh, you will understand that the way you look. Do you have a robe? Is important. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then in the room, what would you be hearing? Music. <laughs> Oh, yeah. They said there's like sometimes wailing or crying, crying. or shaking yeah. and yeah. convulsing. From like the patients. Sweat. Like the from, patients who were being yeah. healed. Who were being, Whoa. gotcha. <laughs> they would be making all of these sorts of noises, right? So. That's how you know it's working. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if there's lots of noise. If you start wailing, noises. it's like, we got it. Yeah, good great. job. Doing great. <laughs> So then all of a sudden they, you know, people were like, the, and I mean the authorities, mm-hmm. like this, this is this, we need to, we need to test this mm-hmm. because this is, this is going on a little, this is, this is getting a little ridiculous. For sure. Right. And so they go to him and they want to, and he says, no, he refuses to do actual testing <laughs> with people on this. So in the meantime, this whole time, he's been training people. Yeah. Who they've been calling his disciples. Gotcha. Okay. okay. <laughs> and so they go to his disciple, and his name was Charles Deslin. And they say, you, you, Charles, <laughs> yes. you're going to do this test with us. And he says, yes. So they did a variety of different things. Like, if I were to go behind that curtain, and you would be sitting there, I would try to mesmerize you from behind the curtain without you knowing that I was actually doing it. That's sneaky. That is, that is, <laughs> yeah. that is underhanded. That Darn is them. Underhanded. And it did nothing. However, doing the same exact thing with the patient knowing that they were present doing it, well, then, then the woman collapses. Same exact thing. Hmm. Okay. Test number two would be that I would be giving to you a glass of water. This glass is magnetized water. Please drink it. And all of a sudden, collapse. Collapse. There's a lot of collapsing yes. going on. Poisoning people? No. <laughs> that water was nothing. It's all the iron. The water was <laughs> nothing. There was nothing in the water. Mm. Now, then, after they brought the, the individual back, they gave them just regular water to hydrate them. 
and okay, whatever, but nothing happened. That was the magnetized water and no healing occurred with it. So what, what this actually also produced is what Harmon said earlier. This was the first ever placebo controlled blind trial. That was the first? That was the first ever. Wow. And might I tell you who was part of this commission? Who? Oh, I think I know. I think I know too. I'll say <laughs> yes. it on the count of three. Right, one, one, two, two three. three. Benjamin Frank- Franklin. Franklin! Yes. We oh. did it. And he was the and he was the first ever. Uh, yeah. oh, the, the, the words getting away from me now. When we, uh, as America, sends uh, someone to diplomat. An, yes, he was the first ambassador. Di- kind of he, yes, that's what he was. He was the first ambassador to France, and he was part of that commission, as well, um, to help go through this whole thing. And so the official study, it doesn't claim that nothing happened. That's not what it claims. What it claims is that the reason for the thing that happened was the imagination. Mm. And that may seem just like nothing to you today, but the fact that someone put in the study that it was the imagination, it's the first time that we were saying that our imagination has this kind of ability and power because they were seeing people were collapsing. They were, that things were happening, but the reason for it had absolutely nothing to do with magnetized water or mesmerism. It was people's imagination. Huh. Right? Yeah. So this does all then lead us forward to hypnotism, Mm -hmm. right? Hypnotism has its roots in mesmerism. And the person who coined the term hypnotism is James Braid. He was Scottish. Yes. (laughs) That was good. (laughs) And he too, he concluded that no magnets were needed. And it comes from the mind Mesmer alone. Was like, Dang it! The <laughs> mind. That was no. my thing. Magnus. Oh, <laughs> but he also says it comes from the mind alone. And so, whether or not Mesmer was a quack or not, there are some things that led to things we still use today, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. That's a little bit about Mr. Mesner, um, Mr. Franz do you Mesmer. Know, do you know how um, the end of Mesmer, like what happened to him, how he died? No, yeah, please tell, tell. Go tell. Okay. He had bladder problems. <laughs> Did he drink magnet water? <laughs> I Maybe it was from magnet water. <laughs> Could he died when possibly he was 80, So like the, I, his, his treatment didn't help him, mm. which is sad. Well, that's because... That's yeah. because everyone took his treatments away from him. That's yeah. true. And they locked really his magnets sad. up in a cabinet and said, go they sit did. in a corner, Mr. Mesner. And after like after the Franklin, like after Ben Franklin's thingy and stuff, and they were like, nope, sorry, fam. Like, we do not believe in this. <laughs> um, he kind of like really drew with them into himself. And yeah. he went to Switzerland and then he went back to Swabia. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, he he did. He was kind of all over that Europe, yeah. uh, the European continent for a bit, mm-hmm. and it actually did. It made it to America as well. There was mesmerizing happening in America. That's so fun. The first person <laughs> was Cynthia Gleason. Okay. She was the Cynthia. first American to be mesmerized. That's really it. I'm gonna be honest. Like maybe like five years, and people were like, "This is whack." We gotta gotta cut this out. The significance of it happening is really all just to prove that that kind of concept and idea can go worldwide. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So not only was it happening in Europe, but it, it, it happened in 1825 in the United States. Now, keep in mind that all the way back in, what, 1766 is when he was leaving college and whatnot or whatever. So, I mean, it's 1825 in the United States. It was something that was 
happening. I feel like it's really interesting with like it being the first uh, placebo effect like treatment thing. Yeah. It it's like showing that your mental state and your imagination really do have a physical impact on you. Yeah. Like I was reading this article about um, modern applications for yes. um, mesmerism. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Got um, it. <laughs> and it's like have faith in yourself. Mesmerism. Even if it's in your, your in your imagination. Oh. <laughs> Oh, my toothache went away. Um. <laughs> it's the water. You're just in the in the room uh. with my magnetized <laughs> magnet water. water. You're just in the room with it, and <laughs> well, because it was talking about how it can re- re- reduce stress and anxiety, which mm-hmm. can really take like physical. I don't know what I'm saying. Like. It can cause physical. It can cause symptoms. physical like, harm. Yeah, physical like harm. Yeah. Anxiety, it depression, takes a toll on you. Yeah. your body, yeah. Yeah, physically, emotionally, your thoughts, all of those things. Yeah, absolutely. And then how do we pull up my but list? Can, but let me ask this question while yeah. you do that. Uh, so, okay, but many of the things that, and we haven't gone through. You haven't been mesmerized by, by me yet, so you you don't know that. But uh, many of the things that happen are kind of calming meditative things yeah. sometimes. Yeah, it's like meditation, yeah. So that can, that can, I mean, some of his stuff was like throwing a bucket of cold water on someone. Like that was like, some of it's not calming, right? <laughs> Speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> but some of it could have been kind of the, the dim room, mm. the mu- soft music playing, yeah. the lilac outfit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so some of it really just like, Maybe you're stressed out and you calmed you yourself down. Like, <laughs> yeah. Right? Maybe you just needed a moment. Yeah. He okay. needed a nail. And a bathtub, <laughs> too. Like, yeah. I'm no yeah. expert on it, but I could see how that could have, in perception, mm-hmm. calmed someone a little bit. Yeah. So just more of the list. There were like four main points. One being the stress and anxiety relief. Number two was pain management. Mm. Um, number three, hypnotherapy. Yeah. And four, personal growth and self-realization. Yeah. But all of those, I think, are taking time to silence things. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Quiet it. Maybe come to a more full understanding of yourself. Hey, if you do this and you're out there, uh, just you know, write us uh, at one word at BataviaFineArtsCenter.org, and we would love to hear how you do it. Or you know, we'll have <laughs> you on. You can you can talk about how you do it <laughs> yeah. too. Okay. Yeah, they have. There's there's there's. It's like a moment in time for you to stop everything else. Kind of like we talked about in the last episode, how meditation sometimes can lead to some of those moments of realization. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. I just wanted to ask you guys something now. <laughs> yes. There were no mesmerized quizzes. I know. I, I know. No, there's none. The first episode That's of like okay. four that we haven't taken a quiz, I was so disappointed. Right. Are you I got ready? that I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> you need magnet water. <laughs> Are you ready to be mesmerized yourself? Sure. Loki, I'm like kind of excited. So, for this, so this is a step by step. So if you're if you're wondering how do you mesmerize, well, the first thing is the preparation. Okay, it's the environment. <laughs> so we need to create a calm, conducive environment. <laughs> Dim lighting, comfortable seats. Does it work if you are skeptical? (laughs) Calm surroundings. I would say, you know, I would say the same thing that maybe hypnotists might say that if you're skeptical and you're not going to give into it, it might not work out. Does that make sense? We had a hypnotist on stage uh, uh, here once before, right? Mm -hmm. And in fact, on our other podcast, we interviewed them on We Talk, and he, he talked a little bit about hypnotism and how it, you know, what people do, if you wanted the companion there, that's We Talk. And that was Colin Mockery and Asad Meki, mm. right? And actually that show went to Off-Broadway after being here for a bit. But they talk about that. So you can listen to that and what he has to say about hypnotism a little bit. Uh, but calm surroundings. Okay. Use props. You know, tubs filled with glass. <laughs> metal and water. <laughs> Self-preparation, Okay. The mesmerizer should be calm. That's me. I'm calm. I'm focused and I am confident. 
You need to dress in a manner that enhances authority and presence. Lilac robes. <laughs> yes, lilac taffeta gown is what he typically wore. Now, the, it, lilac as a color in garments has always typically been a sign of authority or power or something like that because the purple Colors, dye and like, color yeah, was the most expensive. So that kind of makes sense to me, right? Then let's get into the procedure. Follow along at home. <laughs> <laughs> Begin by establishing a connection with the subject through direct eye contact or verbal communication. Have the subject sit or lie comfortably. Next, we're going to do magnetic passes. <laughs> Use sweeping hand movements over the subject's body. Direct the magnetic fluid. This involves moving hands slowly and, and deliberately over areas to be treated. Perform these passes from head to toe or in specific areas where the subject <laughs> reports discomfort. <laughs> Direct interaction. So alternatively, we can use physical contact, such as placing hands on specific points in the body, believed to be poles for the magnetic fluid. Apply gentle pressure. Make rhythmic, rhythmic movements to facilitate the flow of the fluid. Introducing crises. Now, the crisis was the point that Mesmer believed he had to take you to. It was that moaning, that wailing. It was that moment of healing. So that's what in the study they were trying to recreate was a crisis. How can we get these people to do crisis? Are they going to go into crisis when someone's behind the curtain or do they have to be present to go into crisis? So we're going to introduce, uh, induce that crisis. Observe and encourage mesmeric cries. Go ahead. Cry with me. Cry. Wail. Cry with me. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Which are <laughs> dramatic responses such as trembling, convulsions, fainting, which were thought to in indicate the fluid to be in action and moving. Provide a safe environment for these cries to occur. It is safe to cry. You may scream in here. <laughs> Including using padded rooms. Oh my God. <laughs> or mattresses, if needed, for people to throw themselves upon. <laughs> Post session. After the session, reassure. Your experience was wonderful. <laughs> Allow them time to recover and offer support. And lastly, is documentation. Record observations and outcomes to track the effectiveness of the treatment. There we go. Is that like a modern day procedure? That is uh, that is what that was that's what he did. Oh, okay. Uh, and what I do on Thursday evenings. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get in my uh, nine o'clock mesmerizing session. Now, uh, there is uh, there's someone famous of the time that did believe in this. Who? Charles Dickens. Really? The Char author guy? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> right. No, the welder. Oh, 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 I got you. I got you. I was thinking of the wrong Charles Dickens. The best part of that sentence was that, like, you could have just ended it as an author. <laughs> but you had a guy, which really makes me happy. Actually. Yeah, I loved it. So, yeah, I mean, he mentioned it in his works. He was intrigued mm. by it. And it's possible there's, there's some reports that he experimented with it himself. Right? Charles. Charles Dick Dickens. Charles Dickens. <laughs> the author guy. Uh, the, the author, author guy. guy. <laughs> we don't even need to say his name. Can't we just say the author guy? Oh, yeah. yeah. Like the Now author I know guy. who you're talking about. You know? Yeah, the author guy. Yeah. Uh, uh, Marie Antoinette. She patronized him. 
<clears throat> she was intrigued by his methods. Not really, though. Uh, not really a big fan, though. Mm. Not a fanatic of She it. wasn't a fanatic of no. mesmerizing or of Charles Dickens? <laughs> of of the, <laughs> the author guy, you mean. Oh, sorry. Or of the author no, guy. No, mesmer, mesmerizing. She Got it. Really. She okay. wasn't really, yeah. <laughs> There's one case. Have you heard of the case? It, it, tell me if you anyone read about this, but Maria Teresia? Uh, no. She was an accomplished musician who was blind since childhood and the daughter of a senior civil servant. And Mesmer took her on as a patient and significantly improved her blindness. Improved her blindness? Yeah. She never got to a point where it was fully restored. Gotcha. But it, uh, it was significantly improved. A and the reports I read said that, you know... It was, you know, while she was being treated. So as soon as she was not treated anymore, then it, the blindness would return. So, I mean, that just leads me back to the same question. Like, was, was that her own mind doing it? Yeah. Like, I, yeah. it, was there any actual healing taking place at any time from, from him? I mean, I have an opinion, but I'm just <laughs> <kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, mesmer. I mean, mesmer, mesmerization, mesmerizing, all of that thing. I, I, I feel, I, I feel as though yes, sure. The word is mesmerize, right? It's named after this guy, and it's this method to, you know, to for uh, animal. Magnetism. Magnetism, right? It, it, but is it more? Does the word more have to do with us as human beings being so enamored and drawn to this thing, this idea, this concept, this activity, it, it draws us to it without any kind of understanding of why. Yeah, so I was going to say, like, we've talked a lot about Franz, good old Franz. We have. Um, but, like, the word has kind of shifted some because, you know, we're, we're not doing the magnetic thing. Like, hypnotism. I do it on Thursdays right? only. Oh, sorry, <laughs> right. You do it on Thursdays <laughs> only. Um, but like people use the word mesmerize a lot now, right? Like by for a lot of things, like, I don't know. What are some things you feel like you'd be mesmerized by? Like I, somebody once was like, um, the falling snow, like I could just sit yes. and stare at yeah, it for yeah. hours or things yeah, like that. Yeah, it draws you to it. Yeah. And there is a magnetism of it because you're just drawn to the falling snow. Mm. So, yeah. The magnet but, water. Yeah. Uh, the, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but there are there are things like there's an energy in our world, right, that draws us to things. And I I look that an up too. Energy in our world. Well, <laughs> don't you think well, when I say so gravity is a power, right? Yeah. It it yeah. draws us down to the earth, right? Yeah. And so the things that I looked up that people Sorry, mostly my face. mostly find mesmerizing are Things about the globe or the earth or nature or that kind of thing, like the snow you just talked about, mm. gorgeous leaves that are fall, which will very shortly be turning for us, right? Uh, the sounds of uh, uh, the uh, an amazing uh, ocean as you're walking, like it just draws you to it. Does that make sense? I'm sure there's other things, and if you have others, but that's what I kind of found that that uh, nature has a, has a mesmerizing effect on us, which I'm not, I'm not giving him, I'm not saying he wasn't kind of, <laughs> right? That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is if it's a kind of about the energy and this invisible energy that on the earth, between the people, from the people to the earth, um, or going to a zoo, does anyone just get fascinated with animals and how they maneuver different things or climb things? That can be mesmerizing to people. There's an energy there. Go ahead. 
You can think I'm crazy. I am not Mesmer crazy. Only on Thursdays. I don't think you're crazy. <laughs> Just don't fully agree. <laughs> <laughs> but then also, but then have you also like heard people talk about like, well, we kind of talked about this, but like with people like being mesmerized by a person. Yeah. Like, but is there something like, is there something where you feel like you've been mesmerized by like, uh, I don't know, by like something well, yeah I, I feel like artwork and music too like yeah. I'll, I'll find myself mesmerized which i feel like a lot totally. of art and music draws from like human experiences and the world in general kind mm. of drawing back to what you said yeah have you ever just listened to the same song on repeat uh, yeah. like just mm -hmm. like for an hour mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. my daughter will do that just the same oh, exact yeah. song i'm not saying i haven't but just like the same exact thing for an hour on repeat i think that's mesmerizing yeah i think that's I, there's something about the song that is mesmerizing her yeah. it's drawing yeah. her to it For sure. right yeah art totally mm -hmm. i totally see that Razi. i totally see it and Harmon's never been mesmerized uh <laughs> nope can't say that i have <laughs> i would say for me the most mesmerizing thing is probably kind of what you were saying with like nature like going for like a hike or something and it's like i don't know going to cool landmarks like the grand canyon or national parks and it's like yeah yeah yeah. Yep. Okay. Great. Back to that. I feel like too. Sometimes just like listening to certain people talk. Like, like I don't. I don't know if it's like. So ideas. Did you mean? Did you say that after Harmon talked? Because like, <laughs> Harman, like when he was talking, I was like, "Your voice." I bet some people would be like, "Your voice is mesmerizing." Yeah. <laughs> I, I, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, just like in general, like I don't know. Some people just have like a charm. Like not. Like they just have like a charm, like public speakers or people uh, who mm. do things like that. You're just like drawn for some reason yeah. to like listening to them. Are Very. they wearing lilac? Oh, now that you oh. say <laughs> it, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, there is um, that charisma. Mm -hmm. The riz. Yeah. The riz. <laughs> that riz. riz. That riz. That should be is, a nice word. It, it attracts <laughs> us. It it attracts us to it, and I don't even know. I don't even know anymore if you actually need to have charisma to like attract human beings to your ideas or concepts. Well, I think that I, I think that it helps. People are just, for sure. Well, yeah, but, it helps. Yeah. And I think that you just have to be drawn to that person's charisma. I think everybody has charisma. Yeah. Oh, that's it's so just interesting. It's just different. Oh, different, you know? yeah. 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 Oh. No, I agree yeah. with that. That's, yeah. that's wise. So. Everyone's got different riz. Everyone's so, got different everyone's riz. Got... <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna stop. <laughs> that was, that was I feel like we need to have a show called that. Like everybody's got different riz. Oh, that would be a good one. <laughs> Bring on like a guest oh, star. Like, what is your riz? <laughs> that's that's the question that starts Look, the Lancey entire thing. What's your riz? <laughs> <laughs> My riz is I'm hungry. <laughs> I got to listen to the last episode to understand that. Yes. Inside joke. Yeah. yeah. Like, you, you wouldn't get it on this. <laughs> <laughs> he had to be there. <laughs> uh, one of those things. One of those things. <laughs> mesmerize. We. Yes, th that was me. Mesmerize. Did I mesmerize you? Did you I do scared it? scared me a little. I did it. <laughs> like throwing cold water on yeah, you. Yes, yes. I was mesmerized. We. We as human beings. I think sometimes we have a tendency to want to, 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 to find that thing, to, to, to locate that idea, to, to be part of this thing which might be different and take us down a different path. And, and there may be people along our paths, like that writer guy. <laughs> that author guy. That author guy, <laughs> sorry. That author guy who, who maybe writes about it in their stories. Right? And, and they, they experiment with mesmerizing a little bit. And, and then, well, who cares? <laughs> who cares if the, the science people over there in France, if they say that this is nothing, that guy with so much riz, <laughs> he came out to the streets and he talked to us people. And he told us people that this was a thing with the magnetized water. People, people come with me. Let's go to the magnetized water and let's swallow 
metal. Where's, where's his tinfoil hat? <laughs> and let's let's let him wave this thing, these magnets over our body to to pull the to the fluid from blocking. I mean, this this is something that happened. I don't think it happened. I think it's something that happens. I, I think that we can be mesmerized by a lot of glorious things out there. Falling snow, mountains, changing of leaves. They can draw us to them and we can spend hours listening to the same piece of music over and over again. And, and that kind of mesmerization there, that type of mesmerizing, is actually, I think, calming. I think we can have some catharsis through some of those meditative moments of that mesmerization. But I think it's also equally dangerous for us to ignore Sometimes people who have been trained by something, the sciences, and say, we don't agree. You people who went to school for that thing are stupid. And we start to just believe the person who's spewing it. That's where I think mesmerizing or mesmerization, being drawn to something without any actual facts or study or backup to the words or without actually ever wanting to be part of a study like Franz Mesmer refused to do, I think that can lead to danger. And like we say so many times on this, Find out. Seek your own information. Look for things. I'm not going to discount entirely the fact that Mesmer was and did many amazing things for the world. Many amazing things. In fact, one of them being the first placebo study. Not all things have to be great to lead to great processes that we still use to this day. He has led to other forms of hypnosis and hypnotherapy, and he, uh, he, he gave inspiration to other people, including Sigmund Freud, for example. Different scientists would come after him. So his, his inspiration did not have to be purely accurate in order for there to be some good that came out of it. So on that note, I even say there can be some good if we find it. If we take time as societies to truly understand all of the things and put the good forward, create the processes to help us in the future, that, that is something that I'd truly be mesmerized by. Well, my friends, we have come to the end of our episode. I am Dominic. I'm Jenna. I'm Rosie. I'm Harmon. And you've been listening to One Word. One Word. One Word. Join us next month when our word is ghost. <laughs> See you next time. One Word is a production of BFAC On Air.